Hello and welcome to the Halloween Extravaganza Season 3, Episode 18. Yes, because we got yesterday's wrong. <laughs> we thought it was 16, but it was 17. I'm Vox. I'm Natasha. And this is Pick It and Flick It Podcast. Yes. We didn't introduce ourselves or Not say sure. uh, what podcast it was uh, yesterday either. But regardless, we're here. Yeah, still missing a key part of our podcast, but well, you know, hopefully he'll be on the next episode or the episode after that. He's a busy boy. Yes. He's a very busy boy. Today we watched the second movie, but the prequel to yesterday's watch orphan hyphen first kill first kill <laughs> um didn't realize that uh julie styles was in this yeah that was a nice little surprise yes it was <laughs> yes it was you could if you you could if you would <laughs> <laughs> if i would i could uh yeah i have a very small space in my heart for her it's so random. I think she's attractive. She is cute. I think and she's, she's aging well. She's aging like fine wine. But it's just a very, like, it's very strange. You know why I like her? This is a movie podcast. She's natural. We can talk about this. She's not only natural, but I, my mom was in love with, uh, with the movie um, 10 Things I Hate About You. That's one of my dad's favorite movies, too. Yeah. And, and she Looks always like we got to have it. a movie night. <laughs> <laughs> she always watched it and, uh, you know she's in that movie, and I honestly don't think she's that attractive in that movie. But there was something about her like bitch ass attitude, demeanor. yeah, that I was just like, mm, I like her. And then I started seeing more and more movies with her in it, and I was just like, and okay. that's just her. I think she looks better now as you know, thirty some odd year old, probably almost forty year she's old. She's probably forties or fifties now. No, no she's not in her fifties. Yes, she's not in her fifties. She's gotta be. She's gotta be like really late thirties, early forties. She's 41. Okay, exactly. She's not in her 50s. Okay, but you she's... relax over there. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I know my girl's age. You said 30s. I said late 30s, early 40s. Regardless, I think she looks better now than she did when she was younger. Yeah. She just looks good. Anyways. She's always got an attitude, and I like it. Yeah, she does always have an attitude. And um, I think that's one of the best things in this movie um, is when the attitude arrives because yeah. i didn't know she was in this movie and I don't, obviously i didn't know anything about this movie it's just okay they made a i mean prequel. you knew that it was a prequel yeah to oh, okay they made a prequel to the orphan big whoop you know 13 years later but yeah i mean i don't i can't i hate all of the remakes mm -hmm. but i do like a good prequel because i always like the origin story <sighs> That's a it's a fine line with me, right? Because yeah. um, spoiler alert for a later episode uh, this month is we're doing the second Hocus Pocus, right? Which you know it's not a remake, it's not a prequel, it's a sequel, but it's another like right thirty, 30 years, years later. later we're doing a sequel thing like the Ghostbusters thing and you know the Star Wars thing, blah blah. All blah. of the Disney movies being remade to live action, which is fine in its own right, but for me. It's a very fine line with the prequels because if it's done tastefully, um, we can see a lot. You know, we can discover a lot. We can kind of get the all the pieces put together. Was this movie tasteful? I think so. I it, think so. as far as the orphan storyline, that what we know from what we watched yesterday to what we watched today is this movie tasteful. I'm going to say no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's hard because I, like, a big thing, and, like, my sister mentioned this after she watched it. Yeah. And she's like, why did they recast her? Or why didn't they? Or, recast yeah, her? why did they, or why did they cast the same person? See, I like that. It's, it's hard because we talked about on the last episode, I thought she was way older than she actually is. Right, exactly. Um, So when she played the orphan... She was that age technically because they they cast people high schoolers are in their twenties you yeah, know right. it's like yeah and we kind of argue about that yesterday because there's a reveal where she reveals that she has boobs and a butt and I'm like no this right. twelve year old little That's girl what, does not have I, that I thought she was older than that That's why I was like no because she was I was thinking she was like in her twenties then right. and she's in her thirties now but she's got those features in this movie now and they kind of like 
you know, they use that to their advantage. Yeah, but in they, some scenes. they had to, I feel like they had to do too much to keep the same actress. No. <laughs> no, yes. they didn't. Let me tell you what's really good about this. What do you mean? Okay, they had to, whenever there was a scene and she was standing next to someone, they had to show her from behind. Okay. They probably had people on pedestals all the time. Okay. They never really showed her ne- like, oh, next so, to someone. Oh, so hold on. So you're telling me that they're using practical effects it's and not- practical things to make other people appear bigger than what they I are just, and smaller than what they are? What's the biggest gripe we have in movies now? A CGI. Too much they CGI They still used shit. it. Oh, so you're completely... It's like, I can't win with you then because you're saying that the practical effects in this movie to use a body double for the behind they are, and they're using... Not, they're, I'm, I'm not, not going to talk over you. Go ahead. I'm not saying that the practical... Cra- p- p- whoa, whoa, whoa. The practical... Oh my wow. God. Hold on. Practical effects? I'm not saying the practical effects were bad. I'm saying if they would have cast some a younger girl that or a shorter person... They wouldn't have had to go through so much because they already did it. They they did it with her in the first movie where they acted like she was someone else. 2009 and 2022 are two very different time periods. 2009, we had an 12 year old actor like being seductive towards a 40 year old actor. Hand under the blanket, hand going through the hair, kissing on the face and all. That wouldn't fly now, right? Yeah, and not that right. anything in this movie was like that, because it wasn't. It was a totally different style of a movie. But She wanted that, though. But she wanted that, and she talked about that, and she had things that were innuendos towards that. It wouldn't fly now. Okay, fine. That's fair. I can't, I can't disagree with you. The only other thing that I'm going to say that I really enjoyed that they didn't ca- recast is because I like continuity. And when we get a recast... It's, it ruins all aspects for me. Yeah. You know? I mean, and I guess, I, Can I you guess imagine, it like, would be different if it were like 10 years prior instead of two years. Yeah, sure. You know, because you, you can change a lot in 10 years. You can change a lot in 10 years, but two years, you don't change too much sure. to where you look like a completely different person. Sure. But can you imagine if they did that with any other horror icon? Not that she's a horror icon, but like anything... That we have uh, uh, one that pops to mind immediately, and it's because I'm reading the books right now. In Game of Thrones, there is a main character that is with um, Khaleesi, right? And he's in it like three or four episodes, and then all of a sudden, the next season, it's a completely different dude. The guy before had like long hair down to his ass. The guy who oh, recast yeah. him had like super short hair. Uh, Michelle Huseman. Oh, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care who it was. I, just the fact that they recast I, the yeah, fucker and it's that. a different guy. It's completely. They, they don't look anything the alike. The guy that was in flight attendant. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's that ruins it. I get there it. was rumors back, and this is another one that pops in my head. There was rumors back when I was growing up. You know, well. Let me rephrase that. When we were growing up, that they were going to recast Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger because the kids were growing up too fast and they weren't able to keep up with the filming of the movies. Could you imagine if they recast Harry Potter? Yeah, I I get it. I do. No, but I'm I'm just standing on my soapbox for a minute. But I do. I I, I agree don't, with I, my sister in that aspect. But also, I don't. like, it would be, it's only two years prior, would but you, it's also 12 years after that first yeah, movie. So uh, it's 13, kind of like, 13 years. Oh, 13 years after. Um, I read a small blip, spoiler free, wanted to know what people were thinking about the movie, that they used minimal, in quotations, CGI to de-age her. I think that it shows a little. There's not a whole lot of CGI in this movie. The fire gets a little shabby at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, CGI fire is always is always terrible, trash, just though. terrible. But there are a few moments when you're looking at her and she's on like it's a full body shot, and there's only I think two shots in the entire movie that has the full body effect, and you can tell that her face is CGI'd on some little girl, yeah. you know, and it doesn't look very good. But well, and, like the color, I like I just feel like she had a lot of makeup on, and you yeah, could tell. Yeah, she did, and. Because the like lighting in this movie is kind of weird, too. And you even said, yeah, what was with that? Doesn't she have brown eyes? I guess she must not. I swear in the first movie or she, she has did, like... Or she did, and then they got lighter as she got older. Which it can happen. You, know. um, you mentioned earlier 
like when we started to watch it, probably about half hour, 40 minutes into the movie, that there was like this weird filter over it. Yeah, it was like a blurry filter. It kind of reminded me of like smudgy glasses. Yeah. You know? Well, that's like I kept like blinking. <laughs> and I'm like, I- am I like, do I have a migraine right now? Right, because you're getting fuzzy. Yeah, I'm like, what is happening? Yeah, so, that's interesting. I'm uh, glad that you noticed Yeah, it. I did. And it was it was kind of annoying, but I think it was just kind of this... I to make know. it more um, ominous, ominous. Um, uh, ominous and also like i think kind of to just to soften the faces yeah you know not that any of the other actors needed their faces softened but you know obviously we have a almost 30 year old um playing a 12 year old again so well, well playing someone that looks like a 12 year old right but right i mean it would make it i don't know so Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, of it. I mean we're already 10, so about twelve minutes into um, this. <laughs> she, f- Esther or Lena. Lena. Her name's Lena. L e e n a. Lena. Okay. I went to school with a Lena, but it was L i n a. So it was interesting to see L e e. So she escapes from the mental institution. Scarn. Scarn. That's what it is. Yeah. Scarn. And um, she escapes and then ends up killing. Um, the art therapist, because she snuck home with her, then looks for missing children. Yeah. yeah, looks for missing, which this is, I mean, the whole movie is unrealistic, but she looks, she looks for missing children. Yeah, the movie is really unrealistic. Yeah, she looks for missing children and she finds one that looks like her. Yeah. Pretty much. Not like identical, but very similar. What do you think about that? That's how like the Esther was born. Yeah, you know what do you crazy. what do you think about that? I think that's interesting because um, it's I liked that it idea. makes it, it it makes it more believable. Yeah, where I, it wasn't like just that. like she popped up and she's like I'm Esther. Yeah, I uh, yeah she didn't go knocking door to door. Do you have a missing kid? Right, uh, <laughs> or like or just showing up like at an orphanage, being like I'm Esther. I don't know where my parents are, but you know. Yeah, I really liked that concept. The fact that she did a little bit of research, she looked around, and then she read the backstory on Esther yeah. because. That when the uh, she's sitting in a, a a park like a public park after dark and a cop approaches her and he's like where are your parents and she goes my parents are in America so mm-hmm. it was kind of like she knew she was going what was she you know planning to do yeah I didn't mind that I didn't mind that and then so Julia Stiles her mo- is her mom yeah she takes her home brings her home to her husband and her son and they're all so happy to have her back but I, she, no. huh uh-uh. well. That, so it, happy to have her well, back. And we're gonna t- we're gonna. Well, it seemed like she was, you know, on yeah. the jet. She was pr- putting mm-hmm. on a good show. She still there were still things that like she was unsure about. Yeah, and you could tell that she was. Like, yeah, hmm. she was questioning. She was yeah. interesting on that. Uh, husband was ecstatic. Yeah. Uh, but the brother said, "Hey." Yeah. Like it was a, a long time cousin. That he, right. that he hadn't seen and she's like that's all she gets is a hey and he was like oh and then you could tell like the entire like before the big reveal the big the big brother's very uncomfortable with her calls her a freak lets his friends call her a freak yeah, yeah you know just talk shit about her i was hoping uh that the friend storyline kind of fell kind of flat for yeah me. i was hoping that she was gonna like kill one of them slice the the, the jeep the non-2007 Jeep driver. Yeah, that because was definitely not a 2007 Jeep driver. No, they're, they're, this movie keep, takes place two years before the first one. first one takes place in 2009, so this is in 2007. It says it right in the beginning of the movie. When we get back to the house, a n- no fucking way a bright orange, semi-lifted Jeep Wrangler like that existed what? in 2007. It's a different body style. Look up the 2007 Jeep Wrangler body style. It's completely different. There's no way. We'll put it on our um our thumbnail. Yeah, I'll have to remember that. <laughs> oh, I mean, kind of. No way. Sorry the that there's gonna be. Yeah, well, just it doesn't matter color. I guess anyone can have a custom. Excuse me, a custom color um paint like it, paint job on their vehicle, well, but I mean, no way. Sorry if this is gonna be kind of stale. No, look how small it is. I guess, yeah, the, the other the front, one was the, a lot bigger. Yeah, the front end is squished together in the 2007 body style. I want one. The new one is huge because your dad drives a Gladiator, yeah. and the front end of the Gladiator is the exact same as the Wrangler. There's just the extended yeah, back end Yeah, and his car, his 
Gladiator is almost the size of your truck. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. And the Wranglers are big, too. It's just got a stub-ass back end. But the four doors, like they were driving, no way. <laughs> it, it wasn't a 2007. I'm sorry. Yeah. I loved the fact that when Julia Stiles' character was... um. When she was jogging, you know, she was she had an old iPhone that had the, the headphone jack in the top, and she had to run with her headphones getting yeah. all tangled up all over. That was great. Talk, take me back to 2007, because that's when I was running cr- track and cross country. I know the feeling. You yeah, know? that's a reason. That, obviously, not the only reason I didn't like running, but that was a big reason I didn't yeah, like running. Yeah, for sure. You know, now we got wireless everything. But that yeah. Jeep, fuck that Jeep. Yeah. But anyways, the kids pull up. They talk some mad shit. And then and she then says something back to them. In Estonian. Yeah. She said she said something about, if you keep talking to me like that, I'm going to cut your fucking balls off and shove them down your throat. Something along those lines. She said balls, but, fucking, and, and throat, the thing, like, which I really liked. The, and the, they make the husbands or the dads in a lot of horror movies, like, just fucking dumb. Stupid. Dumber than a box of rocks. <laughs> you know. They, uh. <laughs> what was it? Just dumb. Three pieces short of a hot and ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two fries short of a Happy Meal. <laughs> but he didn't even, like, bat an eye at that. The fact no. that she had a full-on accent after being missed. Like, I, I do get it because, like, whenever um my stepmom would talk on the phone with her sister who lived in the UP, like, she would get a Uper accent. For those who don't know, we live in Michigan, and there's a lower peninsula and the upper peninsula, and the upper peninsula is very close to Canada, so it kind of, the accents kind of bleed through. Yeah, kind through. of like Min- Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. They got, the accents kind of bleed through, eh? Yeah. So, so, yeah, anyway. So, whenever she would talk to her, she would get an accent because she was from there. But, I don't know. It's still yeah. just... I think there was some, like, scientific things that were happening here that was believable. But then, at the same time, it's kind of like, hmm, okay. Right. And I just feel like you would know. You know? I don't know. I don't have kids, so I don't know that connection. Yeah, but I feel I like mean, you would be able to know when there wouldn't... She wouldn't be as awkward as she is. But who knows? Maybe... Like, I can't really say much because yeah. I've never had a child and I've never had a child that's been kidnapped. Yeah, so. sure. Right. Um, um, so Well, kidnapping, speaking of which, the story yeah. continues. Go ahead. I'm letting you narrate this one. Oh. The rest of the story. Kids okay. pull up. Dad's convinced. Okay. So he <laughs> believes that she's who she, he's who she says she is. Um, eventually, um, she he has a party. The son has a party because the parents go to a gala. And is that what where we're going? Where no, you missed a huge chunk. What did I miss? Uh, the cop. Yeah, that's what. The cop happens before that because remember he's following them around from the doctor's office and taking oh. pictures of Esther. Esther. So that's. I wish they would have touched on that more. Yeah, they hinted on it, but again, so let's preface this too. Right, now that we're fucking almost twenty minutes in here, this movie was only ninety-eight minutes long, and they got a lot of shit done and they were ready for it and this is the type of movie that i like to see Mm -hmm. it was like one two three let's go get the fuck in get the fuck out we want to make sure this is on streaming services so we can smash it out and we don't have people sitting there for two and a half hours right like the first one fucking killed me (laughs) jesus um i'll preface this real fast they're in the doctor's office psychiatrist oh and then they come out esther catches this guy taking pictures dude shows up says hey by the way we got some questions because it's weird that someone just shows up after four years in a very small town. And the and the therapist was questioning it, too. Yeah. And then Cap says, we got more meetings with the therapist tomorrow morning. Esther says, no way, Jose. She's got the gala. Now we're at the gala. Okay. So the son has a party. The detective shows up. Yes. Illegally. Yeah. Enters the home. Um, steals one of her records that has her fingerprints on it from before and after. Illegally. Um, yes. <laughs> I'll just... Goes home. She follows... Gets in his car. Goes home with him. No. She had done research because it was a week prior. It was a, it was one sentence thing. It was a week prior that she caught him taking pictures outside of the doctor's office. So she had time to do her research on the cop. Right. But how did she get to his house at the same time that he was oh, there? Oh, oh, oh. Um, not sure. I think she got in his car, oh, which okay. we didn't see. Yeah, it didn't. It, so he there gets... There's any deleted scenes for this movie. Yeah. He gets home, starts looking at her fingerprints, matches them, or doesn't match them up, tries to match them up. They don't match. Yeah. She kills him right away. Yes. Which, 
That's another thing. Like, he's a cop. First of all, you had said, why are his doors not locked? Yeah, because the doors open, and then he hears the door close and creaking for, uh, like floorboards. And the first thing he does is like, huh? Must be nothing. And then goes back to right. his, <laughs> goes back well, to his computer. When you think, like, as a cop, you'd be more on it. And if yeah. he, like, you would Well, be he able pulls to out his gun, some... too. Great for him. Yeah, but. He didn't do anything more than that. Right, that doesn't help you. No. So she kills him. Yes. And then Julia Stiles comes in. Well, she stabs him. She stabs him. Didn't okay. kill him. She stabs him, and Julia Stiles comes in and shoots him. Well, my with his favorite. Gun, right? Yeah, yeah. No, with her gun. Oh, she had a gun. Yeah. So uh, stabby, stabby, and she is. She overheard him thinking out loud, and after she stabs him, she asks, "How the fuck did you know I'm not the real Esther? Not even her real mother knows." And she goes, "Believe me, kid." She, she does. does. And the second she says that, or he says that, Julia Stiles shoots him in the head. Yeah. So. And then a couple more in the chest to make sure he's dead. Yes. <laughs> so then. They, and, and this is where the movie gets fucking great. Because yes. the first 45 minutes or a half hour ish, not yeah, that you're good. Like, what's happening? Like, we're really just going to watch The Orphan all again. All over again. Oh, man. It was the so, same thing all over again. Um, Come to find out, Esther was murdered by her brother, Gunner. Gunner. Yes. Um, which. I said this when we were watching it. Reminds me of John Bonet. Oh yeah, she was not. It was not revealed, and they see, that's still, a, that's it's still unsolved. unsolved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the biggest conspiracy is her brother killed her, and her, their parents are covering up for him. Really? Which is honestly the most believable of any storyline from the John Bonet. Yeah, it's hard to prove that if you can't find evidence well, on the body. Well, there was no the body yeah, there was no evidence on the body, but no one entered the house. Wow. There's no signs of breaking and entering. There's no signs of See, I know that story, but I don't know the story like <sighs> it's you do. It's honestly, I know it's very like you know, it's sad and like people are oh, sure. banking on true crime or whatever. It yeah, did sure. happen like 30 years ago, but it's one of like the most interesting true crime stories to me okay. and it's i, I don't want to say i it is my favorite i feel like favorite is a bad thing to say but yeah like, well you listen when to you a say podcast. like my favorite murder yeah you listen to a podcast like john bonnet so. and i know that's basic but whatever but there's no signs of breaking and entering or whatever so i kind of feel like they got the idea from that oh because they think and that's smart because one that. of the conspiracies is he was always too rough like john bonnet's brother i can't yeah. remember his name pat i think whatever was always too rough with her and people noticed that because he was older and he would wrestle with her because whatever. And that is like. Oh, weird. Yeah. So that's a conspiracy is that he was a little bit too rough with her one time and killed her. Damn. So that's what happened in Orphan. Okay. Was Gunner was too rough with Esther and mm -hmm. killed her. Mm -hmm. Um. And then they dump her bitch ass in a well. Right. God damn. But who you to, think. Who to think that they wouldn't go and search like. I don't know. For me, listen, I grew up in a very small town. I did. You know, I knew where like a majority of the things were. Right. Well, there it was, was 2003. A... It wasn't like no, it was. No, again. 2007. No, when she when she dies, when Esther dies. Oh, I'm sorry. The it real Esther. It would have been 2003. Got it. So it's not like they didn't have the technology. They didn't have the knowledge. Like they oh, would yeah. have been able to search for her more because in you know in like the 70s or 80s someone would go missing and be like oh well i looked in my basement she's not there she must be dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true that's true i uh i guess we're on the murder subject here there was a murder in my town um statistically i think there's a murder every 25 years and like one murder for every 25 years in in the small town that i grew up in um, but this murder gained national attention. The FBI yeah, was okay, there. I mean, it was it, it was crazy. There was TV shows on like the IQ or ID channel, whatever it does, like ID. the yeah ID channel. I mean, there was like reenactments. There's everything. And this young lady who was murdered by a classmate's father, right, um, was like tucked away off of a biking trail in the woods. You know, in a little bit of a more populated area than maybe that me personally, if I killed someone, would put somewhere. But, uh, you know, a dog just walking down the trail. That's usually what happens. Sniffed him. Mm -hmm. Or sniffed her out, you know. And it's just like, okay, you're telling me that they're just dumping this little four-year-old girl 
in a well and then they go and throw the fucking cop in the same exact well right and no one knows this pit in the ground exists there's just rotting bodies in the bottom right. what did i say the first thing the, the second they close that thing up they need to put lighter fluid down there i said put up 10 gallons of gasoline and drop a match baby yeah. if you're trying to get rid of stuff that'll do it right and that's like there's got that has to go somewhere, right? It doesn't. It's not just like to the ground. Well, it depends. Maybe I don't know. It, it could be a dried up well. We you don't know what it was. It, it could have been an in ground s- right. silo. They didn't touch on it. My point was is it's a giant metal plate with a fucking hatch door, and no one knows it's there besides this dumbass family. Right? Come no on. one thought like Come maybe on. she's in here and like looked in there. I yeah. call bullshit. But I think that she, I I think that she worked with the cops because they've got money. Well, clearly she worked with the cops. Right, so that's probably why. she calls the cop when es- Esther steals the, the fucking car. Right. You know, and they knew each other. So I think it is because, I think the reason that they never found out where she was or that she was murdered is because of how close they were to she the, is the with police. the cops. Yeah, and then this one stray cop was sniffing on him. Right. Because he knew that she killed... Right, but I think that their, that's their what daughter. like his thing was trying to figure out who this new Esther was. Yeah, I don't know. I think he was trying to do both. I think he was trying to frame both because he got you know fingerprints and there was no matches for him. But then when he was about to die, she he says she knows that you're not the real Esther because he knew that Esther, Esther was dead. Right, which is very interesting. Yeah. After that point, um, the movie moves pretty quick. Yeah, it's funny because she's like. So Julia Stiles, I can't think of what her name is in the movie. Um, Don't care. She tells Esther, fake Esther, um, I, I know that you're not Esther. Gunner knows you're not Esther, but your dad doesn't know. Oh yeah, that you're and not she Esther. spills all the beans. So we're gonna pretend because we can't. It, it would look too suspicious if Esther goes missing twice. Right. So. It's actually funny, like just it becomes a how it transpires. It becomes a sheer comedy. I was gonna like that was one of the things I was gonna say. Con- ow, considering we're Jesus. yeah, no, I punched my uh, control panel over here. <laughs> uh, considering we're approaching a half hour, but um, I was gonna say that after that point, the movie completely changes. The tone changes. The acting changes. Everything changes. Mm-hmm. Everything gets better. Yeah, Julie Styles, you suck in the first half hour of this movie. <laughs> but guess what? That attitude yeah, you, you suck mentioned. It. Acting that like you're acting. Oh man, it was terrible. <laughs> there was a phone call. If you wa- if you watch this movie, if you have already, or if you plan to, and you're listening to all this shit, um, l- go and listen to like get ready for the scene where she's on the phone for the gala, and the conversation literally has no pauses in it. She's on the phone and she's like, "Oh, you really got to come t- tomorrow night, you know? Like, bring your checkbook. Yeah, I promise it's gonna be great. No, just do it." Okay, you're going to come? That's what I like to hear. It's for child cancer. You're silly. Great. I'm glad you changed your mind. Goodbye. (laughs) It's like there's no fucking pauses at all. It's just like this really long one-sentence monologue that she's supposed to be talking on the phone with someone? Yeah. I don't know. It's very strange. But after the reveal of she's a bad guy, the attitude you mentioned earlier that she always has, that comes out. Mm -hmm. Like she just becomes a snotty little snorky bitch. Um, yeah, feeds her macaroni and cheese while they're all having what? Poisoned macaroni and cheese yeah. with sleeping pills. But they're all having like some like Oh, fancy, lamb. Yeah, they all have <laughs> lamb. And then she's like, I know you don't like lamb, so here you go, Esther. And it's like macaroni and cheese with hot dogs in it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, the, the chemistry between the two, although negative, is very positive because they're kind of like going it's back and chemistry. forth. Definitely better chemistry than the couple oh, in the first movie. Well, and I would even argue that the this couple has better chemistry well and they didn't have as much like intimacy in this one which i liked well there it, was one scene where it got only like, one though. yeah it was one intimate intimacy scene but it was like over the top like her hands was like wrapped around her his balls and i was yeah. like whoa <laughs> like what's going on yeah here? and then one time she says i'm gonna go fuck my husband oh yeah that's right but, but other she's than, so snotty with it so it right. worked, it worked but really other than well. that it was like because it's uncomfortable yeah. i'm sure especially for when she was 12 years old oh for to, sure like have to be in that's what scene. i was saying earlier in 2009 like this was still like whoa they did what in 2020 they would never have a 12 year old like being be able to physically do what they did yeah you're right with the actress who, um who plays esther in the first one so gunner is like just not having it with her and gunner's a stupid name yeah it is that's a dumb name <laughs> esther okay 
Mm. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> Gunner, stupid. So, I mean, Terrible. things transpire. She tries. The movie pans out exactly how we think. Yeah. It she it tries works. to get away. She doesn't get away. And then the house sets on fire. Yeah. That scene was cool. Because Julia Stiles falls from the roof. Oh, the only good gore scene. And she movie. smacks her head. On the curb. On the curb. And her head just splatters. It and you hear it. explodes. And you see it. Yeah. Which is great. That was really, really good. Yeah. What I didn't like about the ending here, which we knew was going to happen because we got told in the first movie that the family that she was with prior to being in the orphanage, the house caught on fire and she was the only one to escape with her life. Barely, right? <laughs> So, Continuity issue lines up kind of weird there yeah, for me. Yeah, because wouldn't they say like her family all died, not the family she was with? Right. Right. Or was there a family in between? Well, there's a family after this one because she's been she was adopted like two or three times because remember the okay. boy falls and stabs himself in the face oh, yeah, with yeah, scissors yeah. right so i don't know little bit of a continuity issue but whatever it's 13 fucking years later and they're trying to make a cash grab which they're doing great with yeah so, i mean not really because it's on paramount plus so it's not like they still got you bank have to go. they still got bank for that there's no way that they didn't so um the only other gripe that I have at the end there is when she's walking through the house and she stops to put her makeup on or whatever and she puts her little hand wristband things and her choker on to hide her scars. No fucking way, honey. And then you walk yeah. down the stairs of a fully engulfed house. First of all, if you stopped in that house to put your fucking makeup and bedangles on, you would be suffocated within moments because of the amount of smoke. Not only that, if you survived that somehow and then decided to walk down the fucking two flights of stairs that they have because their stairs curve in the house while it's yeah. fully engulfed, you would melt alive. I mean, I think, and I said this, I think it's just for like the cinematic of course aspect it is. It's of it. It's not for it to be, oh my gosh, that's like so realistic. It's just supposed to be like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, of course. You but know, badass is getting away with it again. I get that, but she was just like bitch slapped and punched and thrown a around the the whole entire house. Like at least we could see some a little bit of burns on her or something. Right. You know, I don't know, whatever. Didn't like that part. Didn't like it. The rest of the movie, although a little outlandish, was pretty realistic. Yeah. That part, no way. You got firefighters that walk into that house with full protective gear that can withstand like three hundred degrees, and they can only be in there for like five minutes, and then they got to get the fuck out and rotate right. My dad was on the fire department for 15 years. I have a, a little bit of knowledge on that. I don't know how much the suits can with, withstand, but this little fucking dweeby girl walking through there. Not a chance, bitch. Tell us how we rate things here. Oh, I was going to say it. Oh, I got you. I did it last time. <laughs> um, No, I did. No, I did it. I did it in the last episode. So get over it. And I, you're now, I, now you do it again? You want me to do it again? Um, we rate <laughs> things based on a scale of 1 to 10. Whoa. Um, And then we also rate them on picketing... Pick, whoa, oh whoa, God, whoa. I can never say that. Picking or flicking it, which picking means that we recommend that you watch it. Flicking meaning that don't watch it. We watch it so you don't have to. Well, we're getting lazy with those, but that's how it is. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're listening, you've probably already listened to one of our episodes. Hopefully. No way. Maybe not. I mean, hopefully not, to, actually. Okay, hopefully listen. you're a new hopefully you're a new listener and you enjoyed it. And now you're going back and listening to our other episode. If you made it almost 35 minutes into this and... You've never listened to us before. Thank you. And also subscribe. But like, I feel like posting 31 videos on YouTube a day, we're going to get a little bit of traction. I hope so. Oh, me too. We'll see. We're not doing it for the fame though. Okay. We're not doing it for the fame. Would you pick it or flick it? That's a big pick for me. Me too. I really like this movie. Me too. Um, yesterday, if you listened to our original, I had to do our classic three likes, three dislikes and discuss a little further with Tosh so that I could determine which way I needed to lean. Um, I leaned lower than what I usually do, um, especially when it comes down to the balance like that. And you leaned even further lower than I thought you were. <laughs> so I'm curious to see what Orphan First Kill sits at between 1 and a 10. Tell me. A 7. Damn, son. What'd you give it? A 7. Really? Yeah, it's a 7 for sure. Just so you guys are aware, Vox and I do not tell each other no, our ratings. We do not. No, so yeah, I really like this movie. Me too. It wasn't it wasn't anything spectacular, 
but it was a fun little ride and i think right. the the later half of this movie really made up for the what what the first half hadn't had um well and even doing. if you hadn't watched the first one it's still well you didn't need to no like they pretty much <laughs> but i mean <laughs> Like, you don't need to know the story because they say exactly what's happening. Yeah, like, yeah. they bring you through it all. It's not like all of a sudden she's at this family's house and you're like, who the fuck is And I like bitch? they didn't spend a lot of time in the uh, institution either. Oh, no. You know, I'm glad that they just kind of push through that. She gets out, yada, yada, yada. She's been planning it for a while. She's been flirting with the guard. Done. You know? Right. Whatever it may be. She's got a relationship with one of the other inmates. Inmates, yeah. Who, yeah so... It's great. It's on Paramount Plus for the next. Well, it might be gone actually. Well, no, that's that's the first one. Oh, the first one. Oh, so Paramount Plus has it right now. If you haven't yeah. seen it, go check it out. The first one got removed on September thirtieth, so we obviously had to pretend to watch it in October so we could check that out. <laughs> but I mean, what are you? What are we talking about? We're we're almost at Halloween. We're we like, bought we're it. Over we there. own it. Oh yeah, we own it. <laughs> Jeez. Totally forgot. It was on Blu-ray. Whatever. Yeah. For those who don't know, if you've made it this far, we are doing 31 movie reviews for the 31 days in October. We call it the Halloween extravaganza. This is our third attempt. I think we're going to make it. I think we'll be just fine. I hope so, yeah. Uh, but if you're interested in following along, we've done 17. This is our 18th. Yes. Yeah, so we've done 17 so far prior to this, and we got uh, a couple more to go. So be sure to subscribe. Um, we'll probably be taking a rather large hiatus. Uh, we'll mention this near the end, the last couple episodes after this, because this is a lot of recording and stuff to do. But yeah. uh, if you have any suggestions for what we should watch or opinions on the movies that we are watching, let us know. We're definitely interested to argue. Yes, we love arguing. We do. We do it a lot, as, right. you, as you heard in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.